to the C sharp file, and we're gonna create. Uh, we need to add them to the actual pages list. So we're gonna create a little function that will handle all the uh, page code. So we don't need to repeat it for each page that we add. We'll just do add page, and then we'll pass through like uh, a title as well as the actual page panel. So we'll do private void add page. Uh, then the first row will be a panel, which will be the actual page panel. The second row will be a string for the name of the page to put on the button. And then the final one will be a color for the button color. Uh, we'll do that later because we don't need to do that fancy stuff yet. So let's get started by uh, de getting defining a variable called page key. So that'll be equal to pages dot count. So the reason we need this is because we need it for uh, the function for when you click the button so that it actually uh, knows what the page it should be set to. So we're defining a constant here. Uh, and the, re uh, the way we get in the page key is it's basically set to the page's count. So uh, the count will be the amount of uh, items in this list. So if we've got one page in the list, then the amount will be uh, one. Uh, but obviously a list start at zero, so we'll get the next uh, item and we'll get the next index in the list by just getting the count. Okay, so let's first create a button and do button equals navigation panel. That's why we defined it earlier. So we can add stuff to it here. Then we'll do dot uh, add dot label and then the label the actual text will just be the name that we passed through and then the class will be nav button. Alright, okay. And then we're going to do button dot uh, add event listener and let's actually just quickly define a variable so another method so it doesn't give us any errors that would just be private void set active page and the argument will be page key so this method will take the, a page key and it will set it active and that will be this page key up here and we'll just add it here so what we're doing here is we're adding uh, like a function to run when uh, you click that button so in here we define what event we want to listen out for and then we define the function that we want to run when that event is uh, passed okay uh, yeah okay add a, and then you want there so yeah, we're just doing a method here so it does need uh, a semicolon and here we're just going to run that function so it's set active page page key so we're running this method with that page key up there and the reason why it needs to be defined is because page count will be different uh, when the function is run and it won't be the same page key. So we do need to define up uh, right. Okay, so we've got a basic button uh, that will change the page when uh, the button is clicked. Okay, so uh, now let's add the page to uh, that list. So we do the page, uh, the pages variable dot add, and then we're going to pass in a tuple with the panel up here and then the button uh, and then that is the page uh, panel and the button panel added to the list so we can then use them later so uh, final if statement final or well, final stuff in this method is page uh, if if pages uh, dot count is less than equal to one uh, then we're going to run some stuff so that's why we set it to minus one so we're basically checking if there isn't an active page at the moment uh, then we're going to set an active page, so we'll do set active page, page key. So if there isn't already an active page, then set the active page to this. And it used to be minus one up here, because otherwise if it, if it was zero, uh, then it would already think that is an active page, whereas there actually isn't. Okay, so now we've done that, we can uh, actual, actually uh, uh, do some uh, code for setting the active page. So let's start with... Uh, uh, if statement if active page is greater than or equal to zero then run this code okay so so what we're doing here is basically saying if uh, there is already an active page uh, if there is already an active page then we want to uh, run this code and this and what we're going to do with this code is we're going to disable that or, uh, currently active page that's another reason for this. We don't want it trying to disable an active page if you know there isn't an active page. So uh, active info equals pages uh, active page. 
Right, okay, so we're defining a variable, uh, which is a tuple with uh, panel and panel equal to page zap to page. So basically, we're getting the current active page from this list, uh, and it's going to give us the, the panel, page panel and the button panel, and then we can edit those to say they're no longer active, so don't display them. So in here we're going to do active in info to item 1. This will give us uh, the page panel. It will give us the first item in the tuple. Do set class uh, active to false. Okay. And then we're going to do the same for item 2. And uh, this will be the page. Obviously we're not done the display the nav button, but it will, st will still be functional. Just the nav button won't have an active class. It won't look any different. Okay. And then we're nearly there. So active page equals page key. We're just setting the active page variable to the new page that should be active and then we're going to get the same stuff here but for the new page so there we go so this will give us the new info we can set this to we'll change this to uh, page info and then we're going to just set that to true I cannot spell okay so we're just doing the same up here rather than uh, activating rather than deactivating the page we're going to activate the page on the button Okay, so that's that done. So if we save, uh, we should probably save that as well. And we actually need to add the pages. That is my bad. Okay. So up here where I created the page panels, we do add page. The first variable is the page panel. The second is the title. And then the final one is the color. And we just do color.red. We can change these in a little bit. Because it won't actually show them at the moment. And then we can do the same for the commands page. Let's do that to blue, and then we can call this commands. Then if we save that, we now have two buttons. Uh, and I see if you click on the text, it's not really a button, but you know, you can still click on it. It just won't have a little hover thing. Okay, then we can switch between the pages, so that works. Now it's practically just CSS. So into the CSS file, uh, what we need to do first is we need to create that nav button. So if we go here, we do dot nav button. Uh, that would do the width. We could just define the hard width first. So that would be 150 pixels. Uh, obviously, if the text is larger, then uh, it will just expand uh, the whole nav uh, nav bar. Text align center. That will align the text in the center. Uh, padding and that will do 10 pixels and zero. So that will add uh, 10 pixels of padding to the top and the bottom, but zero to the left and the right. So there will be padding because the the width is going to be bigger than the actual width of the text. Uh, that would do margin bottom is going to be 10 pixels so we want 10 pixel of distance in between each button yeah, we're going to set the background color we'll just copy that uh, we'll set it to 55 Ooh, that's too much uh, we want the font size to be 15 pixels now uh, we want the color of the text uh, to be an RGB value with like a, a grayish white so just not like too white but a nice gray uh, we want the cursor to be a pointer we want the transition so a cursor pointer is going to make it so it's uh, you know like the click icon or like a button icon rather than uh, the little pointer uh, I'll show you that in a sec when we go in game uh, we want transition so we just copy this transition from up here yeah, we want it to be all rather than just ease out and we'll put that as zero point one second still and then we'll add a little border no, we don't need that for now actually and we can just save that and now if we go in game we have these little buttons so it's a bit better a bit better again there uh, so what we can do now is we can add a border bottom and I'll put, put that as two pixels uh, solid and then the RGB value is just going to be 65 65 uh, and then we want to text shadow so the text looks a bit uh, better on the button uh, no matter like what the background is and that'll be zero zero x y and then five pixels black so now we have a little border at the bottom because that's what we'll set the color to uh, we can actually go back into here and we'll need to set the color here uh, for specific for that button color that we gave her so do button dot style oops dot style dot bottom uh, border bottom color uh, equals to button color so we're just setting the the styles border bottom color to that uh, and obviously we've already defined like the size of the border 
Okay, so now we just have the different colours for each border, which is quite nice. And the final thing we can do in here is we can just copy a few colours uh, that I already pre-picked. So we can uh, put that there. So that's just a nice red. And this one is going to be a nice uh, blue. So we just do new colour and then it's an RGB value, but this time it's uh, a float. So that would be 100%, that would be 30%. There we go, got a bit nicer, a bit softer colours. Okay, so now back in uh, the CSS file, uh, we can add some uh, a nice little hover effect. So we'll do hover, and uh, we'll set the background colour. We'll grab this here. We'll set the background colour to be 60, so just a little bit uh, lighter, so it's a bit more nicer. So now if we go in, you'll see there's a little bit of a effect when you hover, and it's nice and faded in. That's what the transition does. Uh, and then we want to add a and active, so we're adding that class for the active class that we set uh, we set here when we enable and disable the pages. So that's just going to be border uh, bottom two pixel solid red. Uh, actually, I don't know why I still have that. There's no need for that. Sorry. Uh, and then back, we'll just change the background color to be nice seventy five. There we go. Okay, so now if it's active, you see it's got uh, the background's way lighter. But obviously, when we hover over the active one, we don't want it to uh, change uh, on hover. We don't want the color to change still from this. So we do. We just copy that, and then we just add uh, active hover. Basically, if it's active and it's hovered, then it won't change color. There we go. We've got a nice page system now. You can uh, switch between each page. So that's actually a simple page system done. So we've got pages. Uh, that is quite nice. Right, so next time uh, we'll probably fill in some of these pages or something else. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye. Oops, I forgot to say, but quick note, uh, remember to turn this back off uh, so that you can actually toggle the menu on and off. My bad.